Greetings, beloved. God is truly good. And now Family Community Church of Fresno presents Pastor Chester McGinsey. Pastor McGinsey is an anointed voice to the nations with a clear message, building God's kingdom and empowering God's people. Today's teaching will build you, strengthen you, and unlock some kingdom principles that will give you access to the life God originally designed you to live. You'll be challenged to possess the promises of God for your life. And now, please join Pastor McGinsey for this powerful and dynamic message. Turn with me to the Old Testament, the prophet of Isaiah, chapter 59. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. The Redeemer will come to Zion and to those who turn from transgressions in Jacob, says the Lord. As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them and my spirit who is upon you and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, mm -hmm. saith the Lord, from this time forth, from this time, and forevermore. You may be seated. The family is worth fighting for. Today's message is for all of you who have ever found yourself in the midst of family trouble. Today's message is for those of you who have found yourself in the midst of having to deal with real problems in life, in the midst of unfavorable circumstances. It is for those of you who have found yourselves alone and seeming like you have no help. I believe that includes just about everybody in here. Now don't fool yourself and think just because you're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost that you're exempt from being involved in troubling times. Don't think that it exempts you from the amen, difficult dilemmas and messed up moments. Just because you're moving and operating in his will doesn't mean that the enemy will never send trouble your way. For even Job declared that man born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. But isn't it good to know that when trouble comes, and isn't it good to know that when hell, amen, and havoc comes to you, it's good for us to know that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that God will lift up a standard against the enemy. No matter the condition you have this morning, always remember that God has got this. You see, I'm reminded of when the children of Israel had begun and had come to seem like the end of their journey, amen, on the banks of the Jordan. Moses told them to go ahead and they began to wonder what would happen to them next. And the Lord began to tell them in Deuteronomy 31, 6, be strong and be of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them, for the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you and he will never fail you nor forsake you. Sounds like God's got this to me. That's why he told James in chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, my brother count it all joy when you fall into various temptations knowing that the trying of your faith produces patience. And then in verse 12 it also says, blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which is the Lord has promised to them that love him. In other words, God got this. The Lord is telling us also in 1 Peter 4.12, don't think it's strange considering the fiery trials which are to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as that you are partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed, 
you may be glad. You may be glad also with exceeding joy if you suffer for the name of Christ. Amen. Blessed are you. It sounds like to me that God has got, got this. I need to know that you're with me here because I can't start chopping on this tree until I pointed it out to you. Amen. <laughs> when life presents itself with ever-changing variables, yeah. We've got to realize that we serve a God who is stationary in his godness. When everything else in life is moving all around crazy, we serve a God who is stationary in his godness. Yeah. He is unmoved a mover. <laughs> Amen. He's uh -huh. an unmoved a mover. Things that shake us up don't shake God. Right. Amen. I can hear Jehoshaphat, amen, in the background in 2 Chronicles 20 and 17. He says, you will not need to fight in this battle. That's right. Position yourself and That's stand right. still That's and right. see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O yeah. Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Why? Because God's got this. So many times we look over at, at other folk and, amen, and wonder if they've got our back, you know, but, amen, but yeah. sometimes you learn and you discover things along this Christian journey. And I've discovered some things about folk. Sometimes I discover that, amen, uh, something that's disheartening and discouraging, amen. I've discovered that some folks will fade away when the fire gets too hot. Mm -hmm. I've discovered that the family and friends and many folk, when, amen, when it gets a little too hard, you won't see them anymore. No. I heard the Lord tell me and whisper in my ear in Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you. No forsake. No forsake you. Amen. No matter how hot it gets, no matter how hard it gets, I've got this. And he's saying, and you're asking, you know, how do you know that God's got this? Well, in this text this morning, I see three clues that assures me of our security in knowing that God's got it. God has our saved families and our members of our families protected. The first clue I see is this. God has sanctioned the spirit to lift up a standard. God has sanctioned the spirit to lift up a standard. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. If you know anything about floods, when they come, no matter how many sandbags you put up, how big a dam you build, water has a way of getting over, mm -hmm. getting through, and getting around. Come on. And when the water doesn't, amen, and when the water does make it its way past the sandbags and over the walls of the dam, it has a way of engulfing anything and everything that's in its path. It has a way of overtaking and overwhelming everything within its reach. And such is the case with the enemy that's in our lives today. He comes in like a flood into our homes and to our churches. For I, I come to the startling and stunning realization that no matter how many sandbags you put up, no matter how big the dam is, the enemy, just like floodwaters, has a way of getting around, getting over, and getting through. He has a way of infiltrating and penetrating right through the very fabric of our lives and by way of wreaking havoc. Amen. What our text tells us, it says, don't worry about the flood or the havoc that the enemy is causing in our lives because God has already told the Spirit to raise up a standard on our behalf. Right. Let me suggest to you this morning that you don't have to be wrapped up and tied up in what the enemy is doing in your life. Don't allow him to rob you of your faith-focused life. There are some battles in your life that go beyond your capacity to handle on your own. We just need to know that God has got this. You, you see, he has allowed, he has approved, he has authorized. Yes, he has sanctioned the spirit to come to our rescue and lift up a standard. Yeah. He has authorized a means of support on our behalf. He has authorized the spirit, the comforter, to bear us up in times of weakness. Yes, even believers have weak moments Amen. and weak times in their life. Paul declared in Romans 8, 26, likewise, the spirit also helps us in our weakness. 
Paul declared in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 that he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure. What you say? I take pleasure. I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and need and persecution and distress. Say what, Paul? He says, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and needs and persecutions and distress for Christ's sake. Amen. For when I'm weak, when I'm weak, when I don't know how I'm going to make it another day, when I'm weak and about to give up, then I'm made strong. He said there's something about being weak and, amen, and giving up on yourself and totally relying upon God. It's at that moment something transitions between my own ability to do something mm -hmm. and now I'm relying on God and God allows something to occur and he allows strength to come into my life. Amen. As the spirit lifts up the standard, in fact, he is lifting up the very excellence and the authority of God. And because we are partakers of his spirit, we have a right to walk in his excellence and his authority. And because we have the right, it doesn't matter what the enemy is trying to do to you. It doesn't matter how he's trying to tear your home and your family up. You can rest assured that God has got this. Why? Because he puts up a standard. He puts up the very excellence and the authority of Almighty God. Likewise, he has given the Spirit the authority to operate on our behalf. The Holy Spirit is our paraclete. He's our attorney. He is our defense. He comes alongside of us. He's not in front of us. He's not behind us. He comes alongside of us. He's our paraclete. So every time the enemy tries to come against you, know that because the Spirit, amen, the Spirit's intervention, he won't be able to touch you. He may roar like a roaring lion and you hear the roar. You may see the fangs, but you know those are all artificial teeth in his mouth. There's no bite in what he's got. Because when the enemy chooses to come at you with the fiery darts of doubt, of disbelief, of disappointment, the paraclete raises up in our defense. So every time the enemy comes your way in an effort to overthrow you, to get around you, to get over you, the Lord, by the way of the Spirit, lifts up, amen, and says, God has got this. Amen. Every time the enemy tries to remind you of your past failures, yeah. amen, the Lord, God says, I've got this. Yeah. Every time the enemy tries to remind you of your past hurts, yeah. the Lord says, I've got this. Yeah. Amen. Every time the enemy tries to remind you of your past heartache and your family trouble, the Lord says, I got this. That's the devil's job is to try to remind you of something that happened in the past, how you used to live, how been and how things went in the past. But this is a brand new day. It's a brand new season in which you're serving God and walking in faith and don't let him rob you. We're trying to remind you to look in the rear view mirror of your life. Every day and every car that I know, the windshield is much larger than the rear view mirror. Yeah. So I'm going to spend more time looking in the windshield than looking in the rear view mirror. Amen. Why? Because God's got this. Amen. I'm more excited about my future than my past. Amen. Because God has sent in the Spirit to lift up a standard on my behalf. Yeah. Another reason you know that God's got this is because He, God, has reinforced us with the Redeemer. Mm. God has reinforced us with the Redeemer. His spirit, yes, it raises up a standard, but God has reinforced us with the Redeemer. Now, just a point of note here. We need to realize that this is the prophet speaking, and he's prophesying to people that are struggling. He's prophesying to people. And some of the very things he's prophesying, some of them may not see it in their lives, but it's for future generations that's going to come on down the line. Yeah. Yeah, God answers in eternity. God has reinforced us with the Redeemer. Verse 20 says, the Redeemer will come to Zion. Yes, it may not look like it right now, but the Redeemer will come. Not only has God sanctioned the spirit to lift up a standard, but likewise he has added 
amen, to our strength by reinforcing us with the Redeemer. Now, some of you that may be involved in construction, you may understand this a little bit better than the rest of us, but you see, a five-sack mix of concrete will get you to about 2,500 PSI with the right mixture and current curing condition. Right. PSI is the rating of the amount of pressure per square inch mm -hmm. that you can place on concrete before it begins to fail uh -huh. or begins to crack or before it begins to come apart. Yeah. However, if you want your concrete to have additional strength other than just the standard PSI rating, you have to place some steel reinforcement, uh -huh. some steel bars, some, some things that's called a rebar in the middle of that concrete. So when you reach the maximum of your PSI uh -huh. that has steel reinforcement bars, when it would begin normally to crack and begin to fail, the steel reinforcement bars grip a hold of that concrete and say, you ain't going nowhere. I know you want to crack, but you can't crack today. Well, God has fortified our position by sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, as our redeemer. The truth of the matter is that he has come not only to redeem us from sin, but also from the hand of the enemy. Yes, Salvation is for women from sin, but also from the enemy. Yeah. The word redeemer comes from the Greek gala. Its primitive root is redeem according to the law of kinship, uh -huh. used in the context of an avenger, a deliverer, a purchaser, a revenger, or one who ransoms. Therefore, the fact is evident that God's got our backs because he has allowed Jesus, the Redeemer, to pay the price at Calvary in order that we might be redeemed. It's good to know that we've got a loving Redeemer, one who's willing to stand in our place. Aren't you glad about that? Amen. For it is because of Christ's redemptive work at Calvary's cross that we have the right to eternal life. The only reason I'm saved because I am a blood-brought child of the Most High God because of what Jesus Christ standing in my place 2,000 years ago on a place called Calvary. I don't know about you, but I'm glad this morning, brother. Amen. I'm glad you can call it that he took my place. I'm glad that he hung, bled, and died for a whole filthy wretch just like me. I'm so glad that he looked past my faults and saw my need for eternal salvation. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Not only did he die for my sins and pay the ransom for me, but the Bible lets me know that one day soon, man, very soon, that eastern sky is going to break and he's going to come back for all the redeemed of the Lord. The text says, notice this with me, for he is coming back. But he's coming back for those that have turned from their transgressions. Those who have turned to holy living. Those that remember, yes, the past in their rearview mirror, but have looked through the front windshield of glory and saw heaven on yonder's journey. For those that are living a holy life, for those who have turned from their sins and don't want to ever go back. He's coming for his people who are his people. First Peter 2 and 9 says that I am a chosen generation. I'm part of a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. People who were to proclaim the praises of the one who has called us out of darkness, called us out of our past, called us out of the nightclubs, called us out of drinking and alcohol, called us out of Mac Daddy, and called us out of whoredom, called us out of everything, of drugs, called us out of prison, and called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Aren't you glad about it? While I was deep down in my sin, he got up on that cross and he died, declared to the heavenly Father, forgive them. Well, they know not what they do. I want to redeem that one right there. That one right there. That one over there. That one over there. That one, yeah, that one right there too. Every last one that will name the name of Jesus Christ. I want my blood to cover them. People who are to proclaim the praises of the one who called them out of darkness into the marvelous light. I love worshiping God, but every once in a while, you got to get your praise on. Amen. I like to open the air and get your ugly praise on. Amen. You got to praise God for what he's already done. Amen. Amen. Don't expect God to have your back if you're not saved and not doing his will. 
Don't expect God to bail you out if you're doing your own thing. I found out that, listen, when you're standing on God's word, and standing in the will of God. You didn't hear that. When you're standing on God's word. And standing in the will of God. When you're standing on God's word. And standing in the will of God. When you're standing on God's word. And standing in the will of God. I can't help myself. When you're standing on God's word. Tell somebody. When you're standing on God's word. And in the will of God. You don't have to worry about what the enemy's trying to do to you. You don't have to worry. One night's sleep over what the enemy's doing. If I serve a God that's much bigger and much higher, much more powerful than any enemy whatsoever. When you stand on God's word and stand in God's will, you don't have to worry. If you're in his word and in his will, every time mm -hmm. Satan tries to come your way, you'll find out that God got this. Jehoshaphat, yeah, I learned, I learned my lesson. Stand still. That's right. And see the salvation of God. Well, God's got this. You want to stand up and defend yourself? You want to stand up and try to fix it? God says, stand still. Mm. Amen. And know that I'm God. You remember when you were young, if you had a big brother, a big cousin, somebody that was really big, like Brother Height here. Amen. Amen. And then, and then, he, 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 here's somebody selling you whoop tickets, and, and, you, and, you, and you try to stand up for yourself, and then all of a sudden your big brother show up for you. Hey, 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 look, step over here, boy. I, I got this for you. That's the way it is when the enemy comes in like a flood. God raises up a standard, but he also strengthens us on the inside and says, I, I got this. Amen. 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 Listen, listen. It makes all the difference in the world. Listen, and the good thing about it is that he won't have to call up the armed forces. He don't need to activate the National Guard on your behalf. He, he just simply allows the Redeemer, his son, Jesus Christ, to step right in on time, right in on time, not like your time, but in the fullness of time. God's always on time. time. And he reinforces you as you stand on his word and in his will. Even if you've reached the maximum PSI of your capacity in your soul. Right. Amen. You're about to crack. You're about to come apart. You don't know what's going to happen to you. But God says, listen, you've got the spirit, but I got something else on the inside of you to reinforce you. When you think you're about to crack, when you've reached your limit, Amen. he reinforces you. He will put some spiritual steel bar into your spiritual backbone. And when the enemy puts anger in your spirit, the Redeemer will reinforce you with some steel of kindness. When the enemy puts discord in your spirit, the Redeemer will put some steel peace in your brain and your backbone. And when the enemy puts hate in your spirit, the Redeemer will reinforce you with some love for Amen. Jesus, the reinforcer of righteousness, reinforce you with his power and his might. That might not matter to you right now, but listen, it doesn't matter what's happening to you right now. When the enemy comes, remember what Paul says, all things, all things, Amen. not some things, all things work together for good. No matter what the enemy meant for evil, God says, I, I, I see that, but, 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 but I got this. And you're right here facing it, brother. And when God gets through it, God will take it just like this. He's going to turn it around Amen. and show you something brand new. Why? Because God can do more for you in one heartbeat amen, than the devil can do to you over 100 years of living. I'm telling you, God is a powerful God. He's your redeemer. Amen. He's your kinsman redeemer. On the inside, he's your strength. He's your steel on the inside. When other folk think you, you ought to be giving up, that you ought to just drop your head and just leave, that you ought to just walk away, listen, there's something on the inside of you. Greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. Yes, with all our work here, because I'm coming apart. But you ought to know there's something, there's a piece of rebar on the inside of me. Amen, amen. That's covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. The amen that keeps me strong, keeps my head up in the face of all the enemies attack. Because all things work together for good for them that love God, which are called, which are called, which are called according to his purpose. God's going to fulfill his purpose in your life, in your life, in your life. The enemy's trying to crack. The enemy's trying to find your PSI point. But God he doesn't know that you got something on the inside of you. God has sanctioned the spirit to lift up the standard. God has reinforced you with the redeemed. But most of all, but most of all, God has covered you in his covenant. God has 
is covered, covered you in his cup. As for me, says the Lord. God saying, as for me, that means that's what I can say about it. <laughs> this is my covenant with them. Who are them? Those that have turned from their transgression. Those that name the name of the Lord as their personal Savior. Those that have the Holy Spirit and have been reinforced with Jesus Christ on the inside of their life. Uh, as for me, says the Lord, uh, this is my covenant with them. The final point of our text assures us that the fact that indeed God's got our back because he has covered us, he has sheltered us, he has secured us in his covenant. As I continue to look further into what the Lord was saying, I've discovered that this verse was the preamble, the forerunner of what was to come. It was the initial indication and the assurance of the fact that no matter what's going on in my life, in my family, indeed God has got my back. Verse 21 is reaffirming of the covenant that was given to our forefathers before the coming of the Redeemer. We did say he's a prophet, he's prophesying. But now that Redeemer has come, now that Jesus Christ has come, now that he has already come into the sin sick world, and now he has redeemed us. Hebrews 8.10 is confirmation and lets us know that we have, are covered under a new covenant. Amen. And when you read that, you've got to make that personal to you. Uh, that's for you. Uh, for this is the covenant I will make with you, the house of Israel, after those days. I will put my law in your mind, not just theirs, and write them on your heart, not just their hearts. And I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Let me see if I got this straight now. He is my God, and I am his child. That's how I know that he's got my back. Amen. I know that he's got me covered because Psalms 91 and 4 tells me, and I make this personal, that he who dwells in the secret places of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and fortress. He is my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowl and from the presence of precedence. He shall cover me. He shall cover me. He shall cover me with his feathers under his wings, and I shall take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. I tell somebody this morning that God's got this. Come on. God's got this. God's got this. Look to your other name. The neighbor. God's got this. How do you know? Because he's covered you with his covenant. What do you mean God has got you wrapped up and tied up and tangled up all up in Jesus? And when you're wrapped up and tied up and all tangled up in Jesus, the enemy can't get to you. Because he's got to go through the blood in order to get to you. He's got to go through the Holy Spirit to get to you. He's got to go through God's word to get you. If you're wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in Jesus, he just can't get to you. Let me hurry and pull this thing out. I don't know about you, huh. in closing, but I'm so glad that I'm covered. Yeah. I'm so glad that God's got me covered. Covered in his goodness. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, Amen. goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. It sounds like God got me covered. I'm so glad that God has covered me. He's also covered me in his strength. Yes. King Hezekiah in Psalms 46, 1 to 3. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in a time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Through the water, their roar 
and be troubled. Though the mountains be shaken and swelling thereof, I'm so glad that God's got me covered. He covered me with his strength, but he also covered me in his blood. I hear the Apostle Paul say in Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrated his own love towards us. And then while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than now, having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. There's a wrath coming for those who are not saved. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we have been saved by his life. Yeah. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Listen, I'm trying to tell somebody that God has got you covered. I don't care what you're going through today. Even if your family turns their back on you, your friends forsake you, you need to know no matter what. Listen, be like that songwriter said, though the storm keeps on raging in my life. And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from the day. Still, the hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eye upon the distant shore, I know he leads me to the blessed place he has prepared. But if the storm don't cease, and if the wind keeps on blowing in my life, I want somebody to know today that my soul is anchored. My soul is anchored. My soul is anchored in the Lord. Paul said it this way in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Wherefore, my brother, and be steadfast, Amen. unmovable, unmovable. abounding in the work of the Lord. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. No matter what the enemy's doing, be steadfast. But he's hurting me. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He's got you covered. He's got you covered. Colossians 2.6. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in with thanksgiving. So the more the devil swings at you, put a smile on your face. Say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen, amen. Because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean to Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is seeking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within this bell. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is seeking stand. His oath, his covenant, and blood support me in the whelming flood. When earthly props give way, he then is my hope and stay. On Christ, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, when that eastern sky break and he comes with trumpet sounds, oh may I then in him be found, clothed in his righteousness alone, faith faultless to stand before his throne. On Christ, on Christ, on Christ, on Christ, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is seeking sand. God bless you. Amen. 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 Church, stand. Let your soul be anchored in the word. Not in the name of the church, but in the word of God. In his will. Not in the pastor, but in his word. And in his will. Not in the deacon board of leadership. Not in his word. And in his will. Let your family stand strong on his word. And in his will. Amen. And God will never fail. Amen. He said, I'm with you. I'll raise up a stand. I'll put that rebar of the blood of Jesus Christ in your life. Thank you for joining Pastor Chester McGinsey for this powerful teaching. Family Community Church of Fresno is empowering millions of people around the world through dynamic preaching and teaching, humanitarian aid, and many other ministry efforts. 
For additional information and resources from Family Community Church, please visit www.familycommunitychurch.com or call 559-323-5002. We look forward to serving you in